Hi everyone, we've got something very special for you this week. A couple of seasons ago, our music director Jane Glover opened our season with a performance of three of the four coronation anthems by Handel. Uh, we're going to begin with Zadok the Priest, the first one, uh, and actually Jane did a little tour of Westminster Abbey in London uh, and made a little video uh, for the choir boys there. She's actually one of the governors of the choir school at Westminster Abbey and so she'd like to share that with you now. So over to Jane. This fantastic historic building has seen so many important incredibly important days in its 750 year history and I want to talk to you about one of them and that is the 11th of October 1727 and the coronation of George II. Now George II inherited the throne from his father George I who was the first of those German Hanoverian kings. Uh, George I became king rather surprisingly after the death of Queen Anne in 1714, poor Queen Anne died without an heir. Although she'd had 16 children, they all died. And uh, so George I, who was a very remote cousin, uh, came over to be king. And he never quite liked it enough. He was a good king, I think, and, and behaved well, but he never really learned to speak English properly. He didn't enjoy the process of parliamentary government um, and he certainly didn't appreciate the, what we do so well in this country, which is pageantry and ceremony, and uh, sort of loathed all that. Whereas George II, his son, loved it. And for his coronation in October 1727, he wanted the works. And indeed, many people who could remember many coronations going further back all said that this was the most spectacular coronation there was. Um, and he wanted it not just full of ceremony and splendor, but he wanted, of course, the best music to be written for it. And uh, probably to the annoyance of some of the English composers who had wonderful jobs here or in the Chapel Royal or St. Paul's Cathedral, who were generally called upon for these great ceremonial events, uh, George II asked his good mate, another German who had settled here in London, his friend George Frederick Handel, or as he was still known then, Georg Friedrich Handel. And so it was Handel who wrote the four coronation anthems for George II, uh, and which are amazing and amazing in the context of this building. Well, the whole day was amazing. Uh, there was a, a huge procession from Westminster Hall back to the Great West Door, and they erected a great platform um, on which the procession would walk. And on either side of that, they erected boxes and, and stands so people could pay to watch this great procession. And the procession consisted of every dignitary you could imagine, you know, the, the House of Lords, uh, the judiciary, um, uh, uh, the clergy, of course, um, sheriffs and aldermen, uh, uh, musicians, of course. Now, it wasn't just the, the choir of Westminster Abbey, your own predecessors, but the Chapel Royal were brought in too, as they still are for big occasions here and uh, a number of, of performers, obviously uh, instrumentalists. This huge procession, and of course at the end of it, um, the royalty themselves, King George in unbelievable finery, his wife, Queen Caroline, who was also to be crowned in this ceremony. She was attended by their three teenage daughters. They were all also wonderfully robed. Queen Caroline's uh, dress had so many jewels in it. Uh, that apart from the fact that she was also carrying um, an orb and a scepter, she had literally millions of pounds worth of jewels sewn into this dress. It weighed a ton, and she said it was the hardest thing she ever had to bear. Um, that's what she remembers most about that day, was the weight of the frog. Anyway, in they came, and uh, obviously through the Great West Door as normal, 
uh, where the first of the problems occurred, which was there was a sort of traffic jam. Uh, as people came in through the Great West Door and were then shown to their seats, everything slowed, and so it got a bit sort of bumped up towards the back of the procession. And at one point, the Duchess of Marlborough, who was a feisty old lady by then, uh, grabbed a drum from a passing soldier and sat on it to take the weight off her feet. Clever woman. Anyway, eventually everybody got in and everybody got to their seats. There are just a couple of things I'd like to say about these anthems in general. Uh, Handel was such a professional and such a craftsman that uh, he knew exactly how to deploy his instruments, which actually had oboes and trumpets and as well as a full string complement and these two big choirs. He had a lot of people singing. Um, the first anthem and the last anthem, so let thy hand be strengthened and my heart is indicting, don't use the trumpets and the timpani. And I think the reason for that is that the trumpeters would have been probably at the far end of the, of the, of the abbey to play fanfares as the royal party entered. And uh, similarly, they would have to get back to the great west door to play fanfares for when the royal party left, which is why he left them out of the last anthem. There, there are probably other reasons for that too. It's a much more sort of domestic one for, for the Queen. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is about Zadok the priest, which is probably the most famous of them all. And as you know, has this great opening of these rolling arpeggios, which ebb and flow a bit, but gradually crescendo into the great explosion of sound when the choirs come in and the trumpets with Zadok the priest, the first time we've heard the trumpets. For me, this is an incredible piece of writing for a building. No piece of music I know has such arch architectural significance because we sort of feel the music approaching up the nave under this great ceiling. And when it comes here to the moment of the anointing and the choirs explode with that great statement of Zadok the priest, I think we hear the building even when we're not in it. When we perform this anthem ever anywhere else in the world, we hear this building. And so it was just a, a, an extraordinary anthem, which, as you probably know, uh, George II's grandson who became George III, his successor. He was by then a great Handelian. Of course he wasn't born at the time when his grandfather became king, but he was very much uh, an admirer of Handel and he insisted for his own coronation that Zadok the priest was sung at his coronation and it has been done at every coronation since.
Handel's brilliant Zadok the Priest, which we recorded at the Harris Theatre in September 2018. Now we have two more of those wonderful Handel coronation anthems for you. My Heart is Inditing was actually the last of the four that Handel wrote to be performed on that special day. And it was the one that accompanied the crowning of Queen Caroline, the wife of George II. And what I love about this one is that it has a, a much more intimate feeling to it. The trumpets are gone, those blazing trumpets in Zadok, uh, but the texture is much softer and warmer. And the texts have been so well chosen. One verse states, Upon thy right hand did stand the queen, which of course is exactly where she was. And then another verse says, King's daughters were among thy honourable women which was also true because the teenage daughters of uh, the king and queen uh, were accompanying their mother. So this anthem is also a sort of running commentary on what is actually happening. Once again, Handel brings us straight back to those solemnities at Westminster Abbey.
Kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and queens thy nursing mothers. A marvellous statement to cement the union of King George II and Queen Caroline on that special coronation day in 1727. That performance of Handel's My Heart is Indicting was recorded by us at the Harris Theatre in 2018. So here to finish is the anthem that was originally sung at the actual moment of George's coronation the king shall rejoice, which reflects all the majesty and all the solemnity of that historic moment. The trumpets are back and the opening music in D major almost anticipates a certain Alleluia chorus that Handel was going to write a few years later. And the choral writing when that comes in is mightily exuberant. There's a quieter second section, exceeding glad shall he be, and then a busy choral fugue, which Handel loved. Thou hast prevented him with the blessings of goodness. And then a final excited Alleluia, which must have raised those Gothic rafters on that great day in Westminster Abbey. Mm -hmm. 